Welcome to Factorial Engineering. My name is Nilos and this is a nuclear power tutorial. There's a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to move things along as fast as I can. Uh, if you see something I'm missing, then just leave me a comment in the comment section below so that I know that then I'll answer it there or in my Discord either. So there's a lot of ground to cover, but uh, let's, let's start up with the very, very basics. This is uranium. Oh, hold on. Before we go this basic and you just say, I know that, I'm going to cover different designs for different nuclear power plants, uh, how to set up Covrex so it works, uh, and how to do power, how to do uranium power, nuclear power before Covrex and how easy it actually is. Because that one of the big fallacies I see people are hypothesizing that you can't do that. You can, and I'll show you how easy it is. So just the basics. This is uranium ore mined with sulfuric acid. It takes one sulfuric acid to get one mine out. And then of course you get the productivity. And I'm gonna, I really wanted to take this train home, but uh, what happens is, can I do disconnect rolling stock? No, I can't. I still like the color though. We're gonna hit your ride on this train. Wouldn't it be fun if I got run over with, when I'm crossing an intersection here? Probably not. Okay, so basically you mine the uranium, you bring it back to your base, and when you're back in the base, you can start the refinement process. The refinement process is coming right up, so do not fear. And here we are. Now, what happens is that it goes through a process. Let's ignore this. We're going to go to this part. You're mining uranium and uranium comes into this part this is where it goes in you get 10 items in and one item out it is 0.7 percent of the uranium 235 or bright green light green and 99.3 percent of the dark green or uranium 230 238 saying the numbers is going to make us all confused and i'm going to miss it half the time so it's going to be bright green and dark green from now on yeah it sucks this can be productivity module and do that this is one of the high value items so do uh, keep that keep this process uh, with productivity modules it goes up that means it's basically less than one percent is the good the bright green ones and you're going to use it for several different things but primarily you're going to use it here for uranium fuel cells where you get now if a ratio of one in 20 consumption so you're going to have a lot of surplus dark green uh, uranium here we, we do that this takes one uranium 235 the bright green and becomes 10 uranium fuel cells except look at the productivity i highly recommend no i don't highly recommend i absolutely force you to do it you must do this absolutely without doubt you put productivity modules in this this is going to be so constrained in the early game that you want every single bit even to the point of researching the productivity module three just to get every little bit out of it so you get now 40 percent additional yield from the productivity modules who cares about that it's slow this is not a slow process it's working fine just put in a few more right so and that now goes into a uh, you know what i'm just going to request a few things like that one and maybe also some of these just for the hell of it the difference between Coal power and uranium power is the fact that when you run it in a uranium fuel cell. Yeah. Then you run this in a uranium reactor. Then you are. You're, this is always producing. No matter if. There we go. No, we'll just show it there. You can see no matter if this is not connected to anything it'll still consume it at a rate of one fuel cell per two minutes that's very important because that means when you set it up you need to to factor that in so i'm going to show you uh, some designs and then we'll come back to what you can do before you get to the late game and uh, let's start with some basics the way it works is using these items you know what, I think I'll just get a few uh, more of these items in. I didn't have those before, but I think we want those now. 
So the way that it very, very simply works, you have these heat pipes that go out. So once this one is starting to heat, this is now you can see the temperature on the right hand side, it goes, yeah, okay, it, it should go up and the heat will then dissipate into this line and you can see that it gets lower and lower the further you get away. So this is something you absolutely have to keep in mind. Um, it used to be a bug and some people still quote this bug as if it's still there. It is not about uh, you have to place it in a certain sequence. That's not the case. So this one will slowly heat up and the heat will dissipate into the heat pipes. Heat pipes is the only way you can do it. There are no underground heat pipes. So this will start constraining how you move things. Then you'll get it into a heat exchanger where you need to feed water in. The heat exchanger now is also heating up and it needs to get to 160. Uh, no, this st only starts working at 500 degrees and it then produces steam which can go into like this. So this is kind of normal. However, the ratios are not the same as for coal. Normally with coal, one of these, one of, uh, of the, I don't even know what they're called, Oilers is, goes into two steam turbines. That's not the came, that's not even steam turbines, whatever, generator. These are steam turbines. However, this is one of these to 1.78 of the others. I don't know why that's been chosen, but that's just to make things a little bit more complicated. That means if you do this, if you build a pattern like this, you will have some idle capacity. This one can work at 100%, but these will not work at 100%. The other alternative you sort of easily have is a pattern such as this, where it's one and a half, the ratio is one and a half. This ratio is one to two. This is one to one and a half. In this case, these are operating at 100%, but the heat exchangers are not. This is very important because I see almost all designs making assumptions that are not true. So if you, what you, basically you can look at this and say, well, this one's 1 1.2 and this is 1.5. So overall it should be fine. If I look at sort of the ratio here, this looks like a ratio of yeah, this is a good ratio, right? One to one seventy-five. It's, it's it's fine. This uh, this should be a pretty good ratio here, except it isn't, <laughs> because this one is going to be one hundred percent loaded, which is fine, and these are not going to be. While these can, uh, this one will will work at I don't know eighty percent or something, and it cannot use more, and the remaining capacity here cannot be put into these two steam turbines. So if you want to do something like this, you have to build some kind of, of way that the steam can go between them. I usually don't do that. And I do that for several different reasons. I don't want excessive piping everywhere. Another, uh, another thing that you can do is when you build stuff like this, you can also put uh, tanks at the end because that means since these are working 100% yeah just keep heating up since they're working 100% you and you may not have the draw from the network so you can store the rest it does require some back and forth and I'm I used to like it I don't really like it anymore because you need kind of big storage tanks everywhere in order for you really to get a benefit you need to constrain so that it basically runs a cycle where it heats everything up, produces as much steam as possible, store literally millions of units of steam, switch off this, let the steam run back into the turbines and power that way. And all of it is just to save a bit of uranium, which isn't really needed. So my take on it, this is just my recommendation is when you set up, don't set up 10 of those, look at your network, your power product, power consumption, and set up one power plant first. Now I think it's time for us to start looking at proper designs. So my design is always like this, and I scale this towards, uh, towards so that these are 100% utilized, and that means I have an X over capacity here. You have to be aware of one thing. It means that this overlay here will be, will be falsely inflating your capacity, because it will take 
this number of steam turbines and multiply it by 5.8 megawatts as your maximum capacity. But that's not actually the case because you won't be able to produce enough heat and steam, uh, heated steam to support those. Now let's get into the designs. I'm going to do some designs here. Um, first, I'm going to show you something that really looks awesome, in my opinion. This one, which uses like sometimes the three, sometimes the two. And I scrapped this because it actually doesn't balance out. It looks good on paper, but the fact that some will be underperforming and some will be uh, have idle capacity does not balance out unless you do something fancy. So my design, and this is what I have in my blueprint, is going to look like this. I am going to. I've designed it so that it uses uh, uses the uses belts, but you can also just use uh, robots. I'm just assuming that since you're building this at Blue Science, you probably have something belted. It's also more difficult to build it build it with belts. Therefore, I have chosen the belts because it's easier to replace. Now let's go through the ratio of how this works, how much power it generates, and how this works. These strange nuclear reactors have a weird quirk. You know what? I will actually hook this up immediately so we can while uh, it can heat up while I walk through how it how it works. This has a unique capability that says neighborhood bonus. Currently, it says zero, but neighborhood bonus means that this one is consuming and also producing. 40 megawatts of power, but it um, it actually has the capacity. Look at how this works. This goes on the inside belt only. So once it runs out, it will only support. This one will only draw so that we have a nice spinning belt around here and that we have right now. So at this point, oh, they're flying over. Why, why do we suddenly have like a flurry of activity there? Never mind. It just happens. Uh, here. Right, so this one is now heating up. And now this has neighborhood bonus 200%. That means it's actually not producing 40 megawatts, but it's producing 120 megawatts. So this setup is four times 120 megawatts. That means this total setup. There you go. This one is. 420 megawatts and you have it with a nice design here it actually even looks somewhat okay ah, almost okay this one uh, could have been connected if i wanted to so so that's 420 then 480 then i need to make sure that these are sufficient the ratios here are do i have one of those that i can issue this four four of these I need 48 of these because yeah that's just how it works and to support 48 of those I need 84. However in this setup I have a bit more I have 96 turbines I don't really care that I use slightly more turbines and I get a nice design it's somewhat rectangular it uh, it was 420, 480 max efficiency or max efficiency. And the one of the key things as well is that you have to be aware that this line here will drop a lot in heat. So this is only 240, while the top here is 380, well, 375 or something. So if you build this too far out, even though this runs up to 90, 999 degrees, then you might eat, not even ha be able to support this the ones furthest away because all the heat has been sucked out and lost in transit and then you can build a nice fancy design but it won't be able to support it now the, the other part of it is you can calculate how much water it is for this setup you need four pumps it uses a lot of water so always build it near the water i build it like this it goes in and what's also important is that since you need many pumps of water you have to manage how the water goes in because if you just get all four of them into this corner the the belt throughput simply will not be able to transport it so what i have is actually four different lines one two three four that's also part of how you design it each with 12 on it and that's taking each uh, some of the load here i try to keep everything in symmetrics symmetric forms looking nice easy to calculate and this one should then also be adding 
four of these. Yeah. Now let's go up and and hook up one that's bigger because you can also you can build it as big as you want. This one has the quirk here that you get additional efficiency because now you have more neighborhood bonuses. This one has one, two neighborhoods. This one has one, two, three neighbors. Diagonal doesn't count. It must have a full surface next to it. If you sort of have them like that, it doesn't count. It must be surface to surface. And this one we also just hook up so that we can see just how well it's working. And now this one has 200 bonus. This has 300. If we start counting it, that means this is with neighborhood bonus delivering 120 megawatts, 120, 120, 120, and 160 and 160. Add it all together and you get a nice round 800 megawatts of power coming from this power plant. Again here, the numbers we need to deal, deal with are different. Six reactors, 80 heat exchangers, 138. So this one is not linear. And the reason why it's not linear is because now the six is dealing, is producing more heat because of the higher neighborhood bonus. And this one is technically seven, but I'm doing eight. And the reason I'm doing it is again, the same issue. How are you going to split seven here and maintain the flows correctly? So what I've done is I've taken units of 10 plus and another unit of 10 here. So I basically said, since it's 80, then I split them in groups of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I take the water in here from this side and this side. I know that a lot of people will probably prefer to, to maybe just merge it together because then it can balance out. You don't need to balance it out. And all you do is just make the water flow all over the place. This one it will work and it will work consistently because this is constant flow. And there's this constant consumption. Now let's go back to our little power plant. You can hear the churning of the machines here. They are working. You can see the performance, how much fluid consumption, how much fluid consumption they are they're performing. And this actually means, except this one, okay, it's high, very high temperature. We can also see at the end here, this, we are easily able to keep up the temperature here at the end. And the one thing we want to look at as well, I don't know if we have gotten that yet. Yes, we have. The way that this setup works with the belts is that it outputs on the outside belt, because that's just how inserters work. They output on the outside belt, which means that by the time it gets here, it'll be filtered into this one and filtered out. So we always maintain a readily available amount inside on the inside belt and all the outside belt will just be waste that we can then use for reprocessing that can be reprocessed here back into some uh, some uranium 238 like the dark green one so we have two good designs. Now let's talk about some other things. There are two more things I want to cover. I want to cover the Coverex process and I want to talk about uh, how you get started without without the that. so I'm going to say the, the first thing you want to do when you get nuclear power is build this one 480 megawatts of power added to your mid game base will just make you forget that you even need power and in order to do that people are like are always freaking out like oh I don't have enough well I'm going to do it I'm going to jump sort of to conclusions and basically go and then we'll walk through the math together if you have a uranium deposit of this size so you can have 56 miners allocated, then you're good to go. And they are con producing continuously, then you can then you can support four reactors. Let's walk through, through it. There are some assumptions to this, and those assumptions are important. The assumption is that by the time you do this, you have this one researched, the second level of mining productivity, so you get 20% mining productivity. So you get 20% there. This one goes in. If you have 56 miners operating at 20% uh, productivity, you get a bit more than 1,000 uranium per hour. You put the 1,000 uranium in here, into these, including this productivity, you get about 8.5 of the bright uranium per hour. 
you get into this process, which also has plus 40% productivity, and then you get 120 fuel per hour. 120 fuel divided by the four reactors is 30 per reactor. 30 per reactor is exactly what you need for one hour. So very, very simple put. If you have more than 56 miners operating on uranium, then you're good to go. Or alternatively, if you have less, but you build up a stockpile. And that's, that's, I think that's really, really easy benchmark to know, to remember. So 56. And, and if you look at it, this is not a big deposit. And if you can't do this, then just let it run. And if you let it run, let's say with half of them, run it for five hours before you set it up. Well, there you go. You just uh, doubled it for five hours. Now, the next part, the last part I want to cover is Coverex. Coverex is a weird beast. Let's uh, look at, at it just here. This one is one of the weird recipes that take something in and puts the same output out. So basically what this does is takes three of the dark green and turn it into a light green. Very simple, except that it also has a lot of buffers. So you can build this in a myriad of different ways. I try to build it simple because for some reason I always mess it up. The thing is, in the beginning you are getting a rare number of, uh, of uranium here and you just build them into a pile and, and you've, you have supported all this and you put it in. So you need to get, you need to get sort of a constant flow in so you can have more than one because once you put 40 in here, all right, then what? Then this one operates and, and then you sit and wait and then it only generates one more per 60 seconds. So you want everything you mine at that point to go in here to speed up the process because it's like uh, self uh, self feeding. The one very important part, you can use productivity modules on it. And it works the way that it should work, which means instead of getting a total yield of one, then you get a total yield of 1.2 in this case. So that's also very important. Definitely use that. I'm also using modules. So you'll have two states that this system needs to run in the early stage where you are f where you don't have enough uranium 235 so you need to feed it in in order to feed all of these machines and you have the late stage when you have enough uranium 235 and you want to take it out because you maybe want to use it for nuclear uh, weapons or for only using a surplus to feed your hungry nuclear power plants we have a few nuclear power plants here in this base Actually, let's turn this off. So I'm going to start with showing you how it works in the early stage. Early stage, you will feed it in. Uranium-235 that comes in, and I just put it in, so on the inside belt. Now, it also need some of the other part, and that's going to be a constant demand. So that's going to be a constant supply in here, boom, to support it. How you want to get it, I'm just assuming you get these from somewhere. Now there is a point to this. This one has a condition that says only fill this up or always fill this up until it has 50 in it because you are going to get something from the output here. And now this one, okay, let's, let's just follow what happens. It puts everything out on the outside belt and it goes in. You know what? I'm going to take the, this out just so it doesn't run so fast there. Now it doesn't run so fast. <laughs> Plenty of time. So let's explain what happens. See, I want this one. This is just saturating here. And just trying to, whatever we get in, it's probably not going to be this much, but generally speaking, you're going to get something in. You want to get these up and running. They will insert until they get up to twice the number. You can, in the beginning, uh, manually feed them, or you can probably do some really advanced legit. Uh, Circuit networks, I don't bother with it because this is just something you set it off, you forget about it, and sometime later you have thousands of it. So what happens is when one of these is going to complete. Okay, so I guess this one is the one that's closest. Uh, it goes here. It outputs everything on the outside belt, and this one will pick it up. So the pace this can output is obviously also the pace that this one can input. That means... Whatever comes out gets picked up and gets fed in here. If I take this out so that... Oh, never mind. I can't do that. Because it, it is, of course, 
Yeah. So let's uh, watch this as it comes out. Go, go, go. Exciting, exciting. Let's see if something passes on. There. Something will pass on, but it doesn't matter because it flows through. Now there are two logics here. Some of the... If I put this out here, you will see that it gets put into this one and it sometimes exceeds the 50. That means this one shuts off and doesn't fill it up. It's important you don't fill up this belt because there will be a draw here. Slow, but there will be a, a draw. This one though is where you build it and once, you know what, let's, uh, let's speed it up again. There. So now it's going to be sped up and you can see how it operates. This one is now saying you are only working when it is greater than 50. <clears throat> so that there is always a stockpile here. Soon we will be able to see that it it works the way it should. This one is having that one issue that if you get to a point where it actually outputs faster, that's actually kind of where we are now, then the belt moves, then it's kind of wonky. If you have, I usually have loaders, so that's less of a problem. So in this case, you're starting to see that this one is saturating. Come on, saturate my friend. And then it starts exporting. What it also means is that this one is pretty much never working and which is the input. So you can now have this one, the input will automatically take lower priority and you will start getting a surplus. You will still have a consumption of, uh, of the dark green, but now you will start slowly getting an output here. This one has actually been overbuilt. So I don't think I would build it this big if you fully, fully saturated because the belt can simply not keep up. And really, what do you need this much for? Because now they are working so fast that they are having trouble outputting. Outputting, trouble outputting. You're just, you're just really trying to output fast enough there. And this one's not putting. So it keeps, this one is pretty much what you can support on, on a belt here. And there we go. That's basically it. So I think the key findings is get a, Get a Covarex, but don't get it too early because you don't need it. If long as you have 56 miners operating, then you will be able to support a nice, beautiful, aesthetic 200, 480 megawatt power plant. I like this one for six. You can also go up to eight or 10 or 12 or however you like it. However, if you look at mine for the eight, the distance out here becomes really long. And when this is fully utilized, it's barely able to keep up on the temperature and it gets really a lot more wonky when you get it, get it bigger. Also, radars, uh, power poles are important. So I don't really feel that it's, uh, it's, it's very valuable. Sure, you get more productivity, but at this point, as soon as you have, basically, this is for the blue science level. This can be for end game. At the end game, you're gonna have stupid amount look at how easy and how fast this is producing it's producing at 22 per second since it's it can easily do that so definitely you're gonna be swimming in in uranium uh, when you have cobrex but until then you can easily build one or two of those i think that's it thank you very much for watching if you liked it hit the like button uh, if you haven't already maybe uh, go over the subscribe for the channel if you Find one of the more factorial, oxygen included, satisfactory, and other stuff here. And as always, stay effective.